Today we're going to talk about the Cimarron 1911. And since we're going to talk about an automatic pistol, I better change my look so that the keyboard commandos will take me seriously. That's better. So I'm going to shoot a few different types of ammo today. Uh, first, we're going to have some American Eagle FMJ 230 grain. Everything is going to be 230 grain. Then um, last best ammo based out of Sheridan, Montana. I've got uh, six or seven boxes of some 230 grain FMJ from them. And some Winchester white box in hollow point. I um, just want to see how all these different ammos cycle through these three 1911s that I've got. There's several videos out there about the Cimarron 1911 and everybody will show you one of the finishes. This is the blued model, but I also have the Parkerized model and ah, I need a third hand. Oh yeah, there's a nickel model too. Awesome. This 1911 from Cimarron was built for the Wild Bunch matches with the Single Action Shooting Society. It's supposed to be a World War I-esque handgun. Cimarron did a really good job of getting that. However, there are going to be quite a few people that complain about the fact that it is a combination of a 1911 and a 1911A1. And the simplest way to break down the whole debate of whether it's a 1911 or a 1911A1 is to just say it's a 1911 frame and the rest of the parts are 1911A1s. Now, if you wanted to convert this gun to where it was more true to the original 1911 World War I pistol, you can change about $50 worth of parts. The gun as it comes has a little bit bigger beaver tail, has a different hammer, has the 1911A1 style short trigger. The frame doesn't have the scalloped edges that an A1 does and it's got the flat back strap. The sights, the hammer, the grip safety, the safety itself, and the trigger can all be swapped out for World War I 1911 part. Now you'll notice that the slide has the dip cutout of the A1. And even if I wanted to turn this into a 1911, I would probably keep that because it functions a lot better than the old style. First rounds on paper, the Cimarron 1911, Parkerized. First rounds on paper for the Cimarron 1911, Blued. Okay, this is the first rounds out of the Cimarron 1911, Nickel. We've shot all three of these 1911s from Cimarron Firearms and they worked flawlessly. We didn't have one malfunction. Uh, we ran three different types of ammo through them and not a hiccup. I'm not a 1911 connoisseur, but I am definitely a student and I'm trying to learn a lot about them and how to shoot them correctly. I've had a lot of fun with these Cimarron 1911s and I've really enjoyed the historical aspect. Now, like I said earlier, it's not exactly a regular 1911 from World War I. And it's not exactly a 1911A1 from World War II. It's a combination of both of those guns. If you want to make it a World War I type gun, you can get all the parts necessary except for the slide. It's a good shooting gun. Highly recommend them. And I'm kind of partial to the nickel. So if you're into cowboy action shooting and you're interested in shooting the Wild Bunch competitions, I highly recommend the Cimarron 1911. I really appreciate Cimarron Firearms sending out all three versions of their 1911 pistols for me to test and evaluate. Of the three finishes, I like the blue the best. Now, to me, that's just the most traditional looking. The one that might appeal to you the most is going to depend on how you want to use it. For instance, if you want a flashy 1911 that's fun to show your buddies and shoots good, maybe you want to go with the nickel. Just remember that anything nickel is going to show scratches, smudges, and fingerprints way faster than a traditionally blued or parkerized model. The Parkerized, that's my truck gun. That's my workhorse. 
It's the one I carry the most. Maybe it's my favorite. Now, some people don't like the fact that the Cimarron 1911s come with a eight round magazine that has a plastic base plate. And that's just because it's not period correct for the World War I, World War II time period. Now, there's a couple different options you have if that is a concern for you. One, you can just go get some GI mags that have the flat metal base plate. They're seven rounders. And they look good. The best option may be to go to the Cimarron website and look at their Wild Bunch combo. The Wild Bunch combo version of the 1911 comes with a seven round magazine that has the lanyard ring on the bottom of the base plate, which is period correct. So if you don't like the plastic base plate, they have options. I kind of like the extra round, so I'm not going to complain. Yeah.